Well, we, we uh, passed um, an act uh, called the Protection of Freedoms Act in, I think, 2012. And in that act, and this wasn't me, it was the government, uh, in that act, uh, the government had arranged uh, to grant a pardon to all those people convicted under the uh, uh, La Boucher Amendment, effectively, the, the, the laws against uh, homosexuality. Um, the government had arranged in this act to deliver uh, a disregard, so th the, the effect of their conviction would be uh, taken away, uh, it would be removed from the record. The, it seemed to me at the time um, that the, since there were 75,000 people convicted under the La uh, Amendment and other similar acts, and only 16,000 of whom uh, were alive, um, it seemed to me a matter of elementary justice uh, that the same disregard should be extended to those who were dead uh, to provide some comfort to their families and some acknowledgement retrospectively um, of the wrong that had been done to them. And so I proposed that as an amendment to the um, Act, and the government said no. And it, I kept raising it, and we kept saying no. Uh, and it gave reasons, but the reasons didn't seem to me at all compelling. What were the reasons that I gave? Well, one of the reasons was the difficulty in historical cases of knowing whether the, the sex was consensual, for example. Uh, would the records show that or not? And how would you decide if it was in doubt? And, you know, they weren't wholly trivial objections, but there were ways around it. But in the end, um, they said no, and kept saying no. Uh, and I then introduced a private member's bill, which is something that happens in the House of Lords, but also in the Commons, but more frequently, I think, in the Lords, or yeah. to more point in the Lords. The, um, and the private member's bill um, simply proposed a pardon uh, for Alan Turing. And I did that because uh, it seemed to me that if the government was going to say no, in a general sense, one way of getting them to change their minds was to get them to say yes in a specific case and then argue that having said yes in a specific case, they would have to agree to say yes in all the other similar cases because Turing was, of course, dead. Yeah. The, the, uh, the other reason I had for doing it is that I, uh, Alan Turing only ever had one doctoral student. There's a man called Robin Gandhi. Uh, and Robin Gandhi uh, taught me mathematics when I was a mathematics undergraduate at the University of Manchester. And so I, I knew about Turing from an early age. And this, there was this kind of one remove connection with Turing via Robin Gandhi. And, and, and it was the, uh, the bill uh, didn't get anywhere the first time. So I did it again the following year. I put the same, effectively the same bill down again. Uh, and this time the government was extremely sympathetic. It wasn't uh, entirely or even mostly to do with my bill. It's the government had woken up to the fact uh, about Alan Turing. Uh, and that's because there was a large campaign, that was nothing to do with me really, uh, that had talked about how important Turing was, what he did during the war and the effect of that, the fact that he was the father of computing or one of the fathers of computing. And they were, the government seemed to be taken slightly by surprise in the year of the centenary of his death that he was celebrated all over the world but not much here. Uh, and the government came to the point of view, I think, slowly but correctly, uh, that this was something they should do. So what happened was my bill passed through the Lords uh, with warm words said about it uh, by the government, here, uh, the ministers here. Then, of course, in the way of these things, it had to go to the House of Commons. But before it could succeed or fail in the House of Commons, uh, the government uh, decided to grant during a pardon via the royal prerogative. So the Queen then, at their uh, suggestion, uh, granted a royal pardon to Alan Turing. And so the next time I had an opportunity, uh, when there was a bill before us in the House of Lords that I could amend um, under the rules of, it's got to be relevant, um, I uh, put forward an amendment that would extend that pardon to all those people that I'd originally wanted to pardon who were, who were dead the people convicted under the Lubbershire Amendment and other acts uh, who'd now died. Um, the government agreed. Uh, but it agreed, I knew it was going to agree, because the government uh, had, in common with both other major parties, had that commitment in its manifesto for the 2015 election. So you know, I was pushing at a, an open door. All the parties had agreed um, that this should be done. And the government, uh, to give it credit, and a lot of credit is due, enthusiastically supported uh, my amendment, and it became law.
Um, and as a result of that, these people were pardoned. Um, and that happened last year, year before? I, two years ago, maybe. Time flies, I know. But, 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 but it was a very, very gratifying thing. Um, and, and it was the right thing to do. But, but I, th I, I do need to emphasise that, that although I played a part in all this, the, it was only as a, a, a fairly late comer to a campaign that already existed uh, to pardon Turing in particular, but also to pardon or grant the disregard for others who had been similarly convicted. Can I remember Turing, he, um, he was in charge of decoding messages in the war? Yes, yeah. The, uh, he was at Bletchley Park, yeah. which was a secret until not very long ago, actually. Um, and uh, the Germans uh, were using uh, an encrypting device called an Enigma machine. And Turing was, led the team, or was one of the leaders of the team, that managed to decrypt the Enigma signals. And one of the, re one of the ways they did that uh, was by building what was actually the first slightly primitive computer, it didn't look anything like it did in the film. I mean, still primitive. Um, and the, uh, that was a radical advance. The, the, the estimates are that, by experts, not by me, that um, it may have shortened the course of the war by two years uh, because it protected our convoys across the Atlantic, which were being picked off by uh, U-boats, by submarines. Uh, and with this new ability to decrypt their signals, we, we could... Um, figure out how to avoid them, essentially, and without revealing that we were reading the signals, which would have been... A, His decrypting uh, skills, they actually, they saved lives? If hundreds of thousands of lives. Uh, he was uh, a very, very famous uh, uh, radical mathematician, uh, and one of the, probably, uh, the most uh, outstanding mathematicians of the 20th century. So all of those things made him what he was. And, and of course, the tragedy, as everybody knows, I think, is that he was gay. Uh, he uh, was arrested for it. He, he was convicted and sentenced to chemical castration. And two years later, he committed suicide, uh, as I think everybody knows. And this doesn't, you know, what we did doesn't put any of that right. Uh, but it makes marginal amends um, to what the country did to, to Alan Turing.